how do you choose a bathing suit for your body type? Casual recommendations for a theatrical romantic. Main differences between soft gamine and soft natural. I'm gonna be answering all of these questions and more in today's Q&A. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. I am so unbelievably excited. I've dreamed about this ever since I was a little girl. If you're one of those people who has subscribed to this channel over the past few weeks, I am so grateful and so excited. So I thought I would answer some of your burning questions as well as slip in a couple about me so that you guys can get to know me a little bit better. My name is Ellie Jean. I'm a personal stylist and on this channel, we use body types to elevate our personal style and end the war with our wardrobes. Dramatic styles that don't feel stuffy or corporate. It is a question. The idea of the body typing recommendations is not just to put on a dramatic costume. I think a lot of people see that the lines are sharp, tailored, structured, and they're like, right, I can only ever wear a suit from here on out. And that's definitely not the case. If you put a suit on, it's probably going to look very cool, but it might not look very you. So the idea is to translate the lines onto your own personal style and onto the item of clothing that you're looking for. It would depend on your style roots, which is a theory of mine that I've kind of developed over time, having done style files for you guys. Check out this video here if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's say your style was a mix of stone, flower, and sun, which is kind of sweet, casual, and fun, which also rhymes. <laughs> you might wear something like this. So as you can see, the lines are very straight, the pattern's large, the straps are narrow, the line is long. It's not going out of dramatic lines in any way, but it's not wearing a suit. How do you pick a flattering bathing suit or a swimsuit, as we say here in the UK? Before we begin, obviously the main clue is to find your body type and then just follow the lines in kind of how I just described answering the last question. But breaking that down, there are three things you want to look for. First, do you look good in contrast and broken lines? If so, you might look for patterns, two pieces, lots of detail. And if not, you'd look for simple, plain, one pieces maybe, less detail, less layers. Two, do you have a long or short vertical line? If you have a long vertical line, you might want to wear longer pieces. You might want to wear patterns which are longer rather than short. You might want those extra layering pieces like ruffles to be larger or smaller depending on your vertical line. And three, do you have more round or sharp shapes in your frame? And then you wanna echo this in your necklines. If you have more roundness in your frame, you'd want to wear a more rounded neckline like this one. If you have more sharpness in your frame, you might pick sharper necklines. It's really that simple. Did you always know what you wanted to do in life? This is a difficult question because I'm still not sure I know what I want to do in life. I'm absolutely loving being a personal stylist at the moment and helping you guys find your body types, helping you find your personal style and developing on that, working on YouTube. I've been making YouTube videos ever since I was about 13. So I think I've always had that deep drive to create content, to create video. And I've also been very drawn to fashion ever since I watched The Devil Wears Prada, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, so it's really cool that I'm getting to live that life at the moment, but I have, I would love for that, a version of this to go on forever. But there's so many places I could take this. I'm also studying a degree in comparative literature at UCL, which is a academic university in London. Even though I knew I liked fashion and I liked creating content, I don't think I ever really viewed it as a genuine career option for me. It's No one ever said to me in school, you know, you could be an entrepreneur, I think maybe because I was a girl, maybe just because I was from a state school and I don't know, entrepreneurship was kind of not viewed as good behavior you know when you brought in stuff to school to sell whatever you always told off and it just wasn't really part of the world that I grew up in and getting to run my own business now is really fun and I realize in a way that I'm totally made for it and I find it really exciting so if I never really viewed it as an option for me but now that I'm doing it it feels very normal what languages do you speak I speak English et je parle français un peu je l'étudie à l'université I'm not so good anymore. I haven't spoken it in six months. Well, since being here in Poitiers for a couple of weeks, I did live in Montreal for a couple of months, which is a part of Canada where they speak a lot of French. I speak some French. I'm not totally fluent, but that's one of my one of my skills, if you will. Main differences between soft gamine and soft natural. 
Soft gamine have small and petite bone structure, whereas soft naturals are broad and angular. This sounds very simple in principle, <laughs> but both might have a triangular type of body shape where you have shoulders that look slightly wide in proportion to the rest of your frame. Both can look quite curvy, both can look short, and Kibby has made allowances for soft naturals in the past who can get away with some gamine lines because they're short, and he calls them Spitfire soft naturals. It's, that's the only type he's ever really talked about merging the lines for. So there's definitely similarities there, and also he really struggles to place Bridget Bardot who, between soft gamine and soft natural. I think he's technically put her in as soft gamine, but we know that he's really struggled with that in, in the past. He, he doesn't know. So there is some textbook strong differences, but in reality it can be quite difficult to tell the difference between the two. Basically, in summary, soft naturals are larger. They appear more blunt, they appear more strong, they, they just have longer limbs and they just look a lot larger. Are you a Swifty and what's your favourite song of hers? Yes, I am a huge Taylor Swift fan, have been ever since I was 19, 19? Ever since I was 9 <laughs> and when I was in high school every concert that I used to perform at I always sang Taylor Swift songs and I became very much known as the Taylor Swift girl and if you too were the Taylor Swift girl in anywhere between 2009 and maybe 20, I would say maybe even until the folklore era you know that in high school that can be quite difficult. <laughs> so I've done my time as a Swifty, um, but I actually did the Taylor Swift song ranking thing online, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description, and I found it so fun. Warning, it's long, so this is only for the obsessive personality quiz type people out there like myself. My top 10 songs in order 1 to 10 are Fearless, Mean, Dear John, Red, All Too Well, Ours, Mary Song, Last Kiss, 15 and the story of us except I think if I were to do this again I would put the story of us lower and Holy ground higher is actually quite a way bit down this list. It's on 21 But I would say that's one of her best songs. So I must have answered a couple of questions wrong there. <laughs> what is your MBTI? I love MBTI personality tests. I love personal personality tests in general, but this is one that I've done a lot It's very strange doing something online and feeling like you're getting a window into your soul. I've ended up with a few different answers in the past. I'm not sure if I'm an INFP or an INFJ now. I lean very much INFP, I think, but I'm really not sure. What, what I do know is that I'm introverted. That kind of light level socializing leaves me very drained and I really need to get to the meat of a topic in order to feel energized. Intuitive, I very much think about my own internal future a lot, so not necessarily the world and politics, that kind of intuitive type, but I get really obsessed about projects. I get very invested, very consumed in my own sort of projects. I very much make my decisions based on feeling rather than logic, so I'm very much a feeling type. Um, and this drives my boyfriend up the wall, who is a logic type all the way, and he very much struggles to understand feeling types, I think. Um, he's like, well, but, but that's not logical. And it's like, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> And it's the last one where I struggle because I know I have lots of projects with things like spreadsheets. For example, I don't tidy my room and I struggle with that and I struggle to have the drive to do that, but I will sit for hours writing, like making a spreadsheet full of data or making a kind of aesthetic notion page and I'll get really, really absorbed in that. So I can be like really hyper organized and also really not organized. So you tell me, does that make me an INFP or an INFJ? I'm sure there's some of you out there who know a lot about this. Casual recommendations for romantic and theatrical romantic. You want to keep the shapes light, short, soft and rounded. It really is that simple. I've included a couple of examples of what that might look like. You don't have to have like floral patterns on everything. I think this is a bit of a misconception. You don't have to have everything be sparkly, but maybe a, a bow here and there. Just rounded shapes in the shorts or soft lightweight fabrics short lines like crop tops, um, high waists, that kind of thing is going to look really elegant, really chic on you. What's your favourite colour? Pink. I'm such a pink girl all the way through. My room's pink. I went through a phase where I thought I shouldn't like pink so much and then I reached a certain age and I was like, you know what? Pink is cool and I'm not going to be ashamed of liking pink anymore. That's so stupid. Can dramatic classics wear floral prints? Well, A, anyone can wear anything and if you love floral prints, oh my god, wear them. However, you are going to look more timeless and striking in a geometric pattern. If you're if you're gonna wear a pattern, which as a dramatic classic, it's probably best if you stay away from patterns in general if you want to 
have your own beauty kind of shine through because patterns do tend to stifle classics a little bit. But if you are gonna wear a pattern, geometric patterns look great. In terms of floral geometric patterns, you could do something like a sharp daisy over a rounded violet, for example, because it's more sharp, if you see what I mean. If you do wanna wear a rounded pattern, the further away from your face, the better. So if it's a skirt, that's probably gonna be fine because it's not gonna be near your face and it won't distract from you too much. Also for dramatic classics, keep the pattern not too big, not too small, very much in the middle kind of shape and not too many colors in the pattern. So if it's just like your skirt's one color and the pattern's another color, that's probably gonna be okay. But if it's a floral pattern with five different colors running through it, it's definitely gonna distract from you. What was your style like before you learned about kibbe types and essences? I've definitely always been into fashion, but it was a lot more all over the place than it is now. It's a lot more streamlined, I would say. But you know, I think about fashion all day, every day now. So I make a lot more conscious decisions when it comes to buying clothes. I would say my least favorite year for outfits was at the end of 2020, start of 2021. I think I found myself gravitating a lot towards trends. I'd cut my hair and I gained a little bit of weight and I lost sight of my own fashion sense a little bit. That experience which led me to Kibby and led me to body types and color seasons because I went, right, actually I need to care about this stuff because not dressing in a way which doesn't feel flattering to me isn't making me feel very good. So I think it was that experience that kind of led me to this entire thing. But I think my goals, my style roots underneath were always the same. It took a little bit of digging to unearth them, but I think I've always wanted to look quite sweet, feminine, delicate, modest, and a little bit more extravagant um, than everyone else when I walk into a room. Not so bothered about that last bit anymore. That was something that I definitely had in my teens. But having that little bit of luxury, having that little bit of elevation to my outfits is really important to me. I want to wear black in a witchy way, but I'm a spring. So when we say colors do or don't suit you, what we really mean is that the effect that you create is one of harmony, timelessness, elegance, and lets you be quite striking in a very feminine sort of way. In my video on edgy fashion, I pointed out that black looks kind of edgy on most people because it contradicts with most people's coloring. Most people are not dark winters, but if you threw this on, I can't remember her last name, but Nazanin from How I Met Your Mother, she always just looks very elegant in black, not just in her dresses, but in her hair color and her makeup, and it never seems to overwhelm her. So she's gonna really struggle to look edgy in black, but most of us, it's really easy because most people are not dark winters. So if you're a spring, black is inherently going to look quite gothic because it's gonna contradict your coloring. And I would say that that is quite close to the witchy vibe that you want. But if you really don't wanna wear black and you still wanna create that witchy vibe, I would say use the principle of going against your lines a little bit, going against your coloring just a little bit. So maybe wearing deep greens or deep oranges from the autumn palette, which are gonna conflict with your features a little bit, but aren't gonna totally wash you out, might be a really great way to create the witchy effect that you want. Do you want to get married? Yes, I definitely want to get married one day. I'm a very monogamous sort of person. I have a Pinterest board with over 800 pins, I think, for my wedding day. Not that I'm obsessive at all. <laughs> what motivates you to do what you do and why did you start getting into Kibbe body types? I was genuinely fascinated by Kibbe body types. I started learning about this way before I had any intention of creating a TikTok page and a business. I, I just spent a summer completely investing myself in it because I wanted to learn more. I thought it was fascinating. It's really easy to give the business and, and the content my all because it means a lot to me anyway, and I find it so interesting anyway, and I want to find out the answers to all your questions because they're questions that I have too. I get a lot of questions about like, what qualifications do you need? Where did you learn to study? I didn't study any of this in a university. There, there isn't really a university which teaches Kibbe body types because Kibbe's kind of private about the whole body types thing. He keeps it on his Facebook page, Strictly Kibbe, which you guys can join whenever and go through the exercises to find your body type. I found that really, really fun. And even despite my business of helping people find their body types, I still would really recommend that because it's a really fun process and it really te helps you learn a lot about yourself. Can soft dramatics pull off the safari aesthetic? Absolutely. The key for soft dramatics is waist emphasis. Maybe steer away from the sharp collars that are involved in safari styles. Keep the fabrics light and steer away from straight trousers and stiff fabrics. You want trousers that echo your hourglass shape and maybe longer dresses and, and, and generally keep in mind your general body type recommendations and you can create some really cool soft dramatic outfits which hopefully you guys have been seeing here. 
What kind of face does Lord have? I would say that Lord has ethereal essence. A lot of people think that ethereal essence is a pixie face and it's not. For example, Chloe Bailey, a lot of people say she must have ethereal essence and she definitely has some, but I would say she's an ethereal mixed with maybe gamine and ingenue, whereas Lord is very much pure ethereal essence. It's that kind of ageless, wise, timeless, of another time, angelic kind of features. She's so ethereal. <laughs> Are you working full-time on body and style? Yes, I am at the moment. I am going back to finish my degree in September, October. But for now, I'm absolutely working full-time. And if you want a body breakdown from me, find out your body type, your essence, your color season, and maybe even a style file where I help you find your personal style, make sure to head to bodyandstyle.com and check out my consultations. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy my playlist on well, any of my playlists really, because this is a Q&A, but maybe my playlist on body types. Give it a whirl. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.